This is your one and only Firespark81 with your daily dose of video goodness and welcome back to another exciting Valheim video. Today we're going to do a build. Let's get to it. So I have had many and I mean many requests on this channel for me to do some type of build content. And I'm sure all of those people who requested said content were expecting some type of absolutely fantastically beautiful creative build, but that's not how a fire spark do. So instead, what you are getting is the absolute most efficient build that I could come up with to take you from the beginning of the game to mid to late game. So let's talk a little bit about it and why you would want to build it. And then I'm going to show you how to build it. First things first, the overall design is designed in a way where you don't have to pickaxe the ground. You basically just need to level the ground and get it as level as you can. And it'll be stable. As you can see here, we don't have any problems. Everything's stable. The roof's not collapsing in any of that. Second thing is I wanted to make sure that no matter where you were inside of the long house, you will have comfort nine. So it doesn't matter where we're at here, unless we're like way back here or something weird, like in the corner or something like that. But any of the main areas here that you would need to access, we are constantly under comfort nine. The other thing I wanted to do was make sure that it was modular so that it could expand with you as you grow. So you can build the shell. And then as you start to progress through the game, as you see here, we've kitted out our work table. And over here, we've kitted out our forge. Back here, we have room for our smelter and our charcoal kiln. And then we have plenty of storage here. And then over here, we have an absolute buttload of storage in which you can label. We have spots for cooking cooking all kinds of different foods. So you can cook your meat over here. You can cook your stews and all of that other stuff. And then of course you have your bed. Now I know what you're thinking. You're like fire spark, but what if I have somebody else playing with me and we need two beds? Well, that's super easy. You just remove the bed from the middle and then just place two beds like so. And then there you go. And you're like, but Firespark, we have a whole group of like four or five people playing. No, they build their own house. Okay, so now that we've covered all of that, let's build it. But before we build it, I'm going to build it in what is essentially creative mode. And I know many of you are going to ask how I am doing it. So I'm going to tell you how to do it. You hit F5, that brings up the console. You type, I'm a cheater, just like you see there. And then you can see I just turned off cheats. So I'm going to type it again and now cheats are on. The next thing you want to do as you see the command list there is we're going to type debug mode. So you just type debug mode like so and then hit enter. I already had it on so I turned it off. We're going to turn it on again. So if you haven't already typed it, you'll just get debug mode true. Once you've done that, you just hit the B key. As you see up there, it says no placement cost is false. And if I hit it again, no placement cost is true. I logged out without turning it off and when you do that the first time you hit it it does that and then you like you have to hit it again but now we can easily just build whatever we want to our hearts content without having to worry about resources or anything like that so for those of you creatives out there if you want to just be creative that's how you can go about doing it but you don't need to do that in order to build this design once again this design is to is created and designed in a way that you can build it right from the get-go with a simple stone axe and then it will grow with you as you grow up until you get to the point where you're nearing end game. But yeah, anyway, let's go do the build. So the best thing you want to do is find a area that is nice and flat. I highly recommend any of these giant open fields in the meadows. And you're going to be like, but what am I going to do about defense? Well, like I told you, the whole thing is designed modular. So there is room for defense and we'll talk about that after we complete the build. Oh, another thing that might help you if you just want to build in creative is hit F5 and type ghost. And that's going to make sure that nothing can see you. Okay. So to do this, what we're going to do is you would place down a station somewhere around here. So we're going to grab our crafting station. You want to find an area that's nice and big like this. This will actually work perfect. So we're going to kind of find an area that's almost a little level ish. So if we take a look here, let's get up on the hill. Now the design is very forgiving in the sense that it'll have a bunch of support for you, but you can't just like build it on a cliffside. So if we look here, we have a nice 
nice little thing right through here, but unfortunately there is rocks. And if we don't have a pickaxe yet, we can't do anything about that. However, we do have a nice little spot right here where there really isn't anything that we couldn't deal with early game. Okay, so once again, if you're playing and you're not in creative, you would just place down a workstation. For this build, you're probably going to need two, so you would place down another one a little bit out from the other one so that they, they overlap in their radiuses. There we go, so something like that. And then you're going to cover one of those and be ready to use it for repairing and for making a hoe. And then we're gonna find a spot that's higher above everything else so if you take a look here we look out here this is all kind of even ish but we have this nice large lump right here and the reason we're going to do this is because we're going to build or we're going to level out from this spot when you are leveling you level from where your character is so it takes the height that i'm standing at and tries to raise everything else around it but we can kind of even this out a lot by starting at a high point and then working that high point down after we've leveled from the high point. And let me demonstrate. So we're gonna start here, and what we're going to do is just kind of work our way out from around us. And the reason I'm showing this, I know many of you already know how to level, but I've all, I've seen the question a bunch of times on like how to level the ground. And this is important also for the build because you need to know how to do this if you don't have a pickaxe yet. And this is going to be the most time consuming part because you want to take your time when you're doing this and make sure you get things as level as you can get them. So we're just gonna continue to make sure that we're level here. I like to make a couple of passes because it doesn't always seem to take it to where you want it to go right from the get-go. So there we go. Now we're, we kind of got like a nice large rounded mound here. Now I'm gonna move a little bit to the edge here and I'm just gonna do the same thing again. I'm just gonna kind of take it out and you can see we're, we're slowly leveling the ground out that way and we're ending up with a slope here. All right, so I got this about as level as we're going to get it right now. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna move over here because this is a nice little bit of a high spot here. And I'm just gonna to continue to level this off as well. Now, the thing is big, but it's not too crazy big. So we might actually be able to fit it in here, but we need to continue to level this out. So now what we want to do is stand ever so slightly lower on this hill because we can actually bring this, this large hill that we have here down quite a bit by just coming down here and just standing right here and just kind of working our way around here. And then we're going to continue to go out and all that that we raised, we're actually going to bring down just a little bit. And then all this over here that we raised, we're gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna work around from this spot here because now if you take a look, look at how level we're getting this ground now. And you can see here with just a little bit of work, we were able to get this ground pretty nice and flat here with just working the ground and working those levels a little bit around here and uh, there we go. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the beams as our base and we're gonna use the beams to map out the size. So I'm just using the wood beam here and this is seven long. So we're gonna actually go, let's see here, right about here, one, two, three. And then I'm gonna go through here, four, five, six, seven. So that actually puts the rock right in our doorway and I don't want that. So I'm going to delete that beam there and put one more down at this side. That's gonna move our doorway right to here. So the rock is just over there to the side. So it is seven across like this and then it is 12 long. So we're gonna go just knock 12 of these together. And there we go. So now we have the main part laid out. That's the size it's going to be. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna run beams down the center. So at this point, you should have something that looks like that. If you have any places where it doesn't touch the ground, so I don't know, we'll we'll go through here and I'll actually, I'll force this to not touch the ground here so that I can show you. Okay, so if you have something like this where it's not completely touching the ground, you couldn't get it level or anything like that, all you're gonna do is take one of these little wooden poles and just do that. And you can have a couple of spots. Now you don't want like the whole thing 
all the way across like missing and you have to go through and line these things there you should be able to easily end up with something like this as you saw there with flattening ground the ground it's not very hard to find a spot where you can get the ground mostly flat but if you do have a couple of spots where it just won't cooperate and you have low spots in your build i'll go over here and i'll create a couple more fictitious low spots here so let's say we have one here in the middle as well just go through and put another one of these you've got plenty of snap points so we're going to snap it in there to make sure that those are nice and supported and i'm just going to go through here i'm going to make sure that this one is not touching the ground at all i actually want it to be green so that i can show you you can have green ones in here so there we go it's green it's fine it's no big deal now we're just going to go through here and we're going to put in our planks so we're just going to cover the entire floor in the planks Okay, now we have the whole thing covered and our floor is completely done. Now there's something else that I want to show you here you may or may not have noticed on this build up here, and that is we have supports on the side. So you can see here we have a bunch of the angled supports going all along the side here, and that is to add additional foundation support. So if you take a look here, we got it there, 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 even on pieces because I'm there's some pieces here somewhere. I know they're not all blue. I had a couple around here that were not there, like this one. This puts them closer to a foundation piece. So right now, this is a foundation piece and it's connected to it, but this one here would not be. But because we have these in the ground, it is now only one away from a foundation piece instead of two. So we have these all along the side. Now, if you're as lucky as I was down there in the new build, you don't need to do that. But I highly recommend doing it if you end up with a situation like this where I was not able to get the ground as flat. You can see here, I've got them all along along the side. And I'm going to show you over here on this build how to snap them in. So all you have to do is grab the 26 degrees of wood beam and then we're just going to connect it right there in those corners like so. I'm going to go ahead and do it to this one even though that is not necessary because I was able to get the ground nice and flat but you may not be able to. So we're just going to go ahead and make sure we add it to the build anyway just in case. So we have them all around the build and our build, our floor is super secure now. Now it's time to do the wall. So to start with, we're gonna put in the door. I like the wood gate as a door. So that's what I designed the build with. I like it, it's nice, it's big, it's awesome, it's a good door and uh, that's what we're using. Now the next thing we're gonna do is drop our walls down. So the walls are super simple. Because of the wood gate, we do one normal wall and then we do a half wall on top of it and you're just going to wrap the entire building in that. So an easy way to do this top layer, once you get it started, you can just look at the previous one. So if you just look at the back of it, it's really super simple once you get started, and then we'll just rotate here. We did the corner, and now we just continue to look at the back side there okay that's it walls are done now if you take a look here the roof does have a good bit of support so we have pillars going up there we have pillars going up there and then if we go inside here we have the pillars on the inside supporting the center of the roof so we're going to start with the pillars and then add the roof so for the center pillars you count in six so if you look here we have one two three, four, five, six. So we want a pillar right here in this corner here. And then it's the same thing over here. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then we want it right there. So that is our markers for our pillars. And then we're just gonna stack them on top of each other like so. It's very important that your center pillars be touching a foundation piece. They don't have to be foundation like these are, but they need to at least be touching a foundation piece. And then we need to go up a little bit more. And in order to do that, what I like to do is just place a little bit of scaffolding here. And then we can jump up on top of this like this, and we can get them all at their max height that they need to be. Okay, and then we can just delete our scaffolding. And now it's time to do the roof. So the roof is this piece here, the 26 degrees. And we're just going to start going through here and placing the roof on both sides. Now, when you get too thick, it's a good idea to start with these pillar pieces. So you can see we have a piece right there. We're just going to snap like that. 
And then we're going to start from the center and work our way out just in case if you have a situation where you're not as stable as we are doing it this way will make sure that you have stability because you're touching the pillars first and then you can just work on building outwards. All right, once you've gotten the roof to this point, we can head up top and start doing the top part of it. And to do that, we're just going to build a little scaffolding here on the side so that we can then jump up on top of the roof and then we can start to do the top part. So the top part is pretty easy. We're going to start right here and we're going to add the little tiny little nub here and we're just going to go like that. And then I find it easier to snap the pieces if we add a beam across. So we're just going to add that there and then we'll delete it in a second. And then we want this roof here and we're just going to snap it like that. And then we can delete that beam across there because I don't like it and we're going to go like this so you basically you connect them to the pillars and then we go out one more because our fires are going to be right there and on the other side now we can take the rest of these and we can actually connect them like so and then it serves absolutely no purpose but I like the way it looks so we just freehand it won't really snap as you see here, it doesn't really snap. Uh, we take one of the little tiny, what is this, the one millimeter pieces, and you just kind of freehand it like that. And see, that looks way better. And we're going to do the same thing here on the other side. But once again, serves no purpose, does absolutely nothing. It just makes it look better. All right, so now we have to fill in the sides here, and that's relatively easy to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this, uh, what is this, the wood wall 26, and we're just going to snap a piece like that and we're going to do the same thing there and then we're going to come over here we're going to spin it around we're going to do the same thing and now what we need to do is grab our little half wall piece here and we're just going to snap it in like that same thing over here and just snap it in like that and then we want to grab a normal wall and we're going to put a normal wall on both sides and then normal wall in the middle and now we can do our pillars here so we're just going to run pillars up like that and then on this side as well it takes a little bit to snap it through the door but you can get it in there so we're going to run them up like that and then we can run them to the top like so and you might have a better time doing it out i can't do it with that glare i was gonna say you might have a better time doing it outside but I can't do it with the glare. So you'll also notice that, that the second pillar that you snap, it actually goes down inside the other pillar a little bit. You can see it's clipping down and that's fine. That's what we want. Otherwise it's gonna clip up through the roof. And now we have support there for those pieces. So now we can just fill in that little gap there and then that little gap right there. And then for our gap here, you can leave that open to make sure you get really good smoke ventilation or you can close it up with an X. I like closing it with the X. I find the X to be a little finicky, but if you mess with it a little bit, you can get it to snap right dead center. So we have a little tiny bit of uh, airflow through there so that the smoke can get out, but the majority of our smoke is going to escape through the top here. Okay, so then on the back side, you literally do the exact same thing that we just did there. All right, so there we go. Now we have our shell completed. So now we need room for our fire. So we're going to knock out that. And then we're going to come over here and we are going to knock out this one. So we have two fires for multiple reasons. We have them because they make sure that we're always warm and two to make sure that we always have that resting nine buff. So we're going to put that right there and then we're going to put the other one right here. Now, if you're just starting out and you don't have the cooking pot yet, you can just put the the little what what is this called the the cooking station on top of them like so so and then i could do the same thing over here but i really never really needed more than just two of these so anyway you just leave the fire there if you're not going to use it as a cooking station so now that you have the shell done and you have your fires the next thing you're going to want to work on is storage and moving in one of your crafting stations so we're just going to bust that down and we're going to bring that in here so we'll grab our crafting station and we are just going to put it I like to put it, line it up with the middle. 
So we're just going to put it like that. Now it encompasses the whole inside here. And then we also want to put down our bed. There's our bed. And the next thing we're going to work on is storage. So storage covers four of these planks. So if you look one, two, three, four, we're going to take storage all the way to there. So we just start here at the edge and we just line up storage containers. And if you're not sure how far to go or you don't wanna lose count, you can easily mark. So just go one, two, three, four. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put down a beam right here in the corner because we're gonna put beams there anyway, just for looks. I like the way it looked, so I put them there. Okay, so then we're just going to continue with our storage until we get to that beam and we'll just use that beam as our marker. Okay, and there we go. So then what we want to do is do our next level. So for our next level, we grab this and we're actually going to lower it down right above the other ones. So something like that. And then so that when we snap the next one up here, because the next one is going to snap, we can still get storage chests up there. So let's just kind of get it right like that. And then we just take it all the way across. Once you get the first one, the rest of them will snap. I also put the beams here to cover up this because this just ends up looking kind of ugly. So if you put the two beams there like I had had them in the other build like this, it just kind of covers up that mess and you don't really see it. So then we can just go through here and put chests right above each of the other chests. And then if you did everything right, you should be able to go back to the building. You should be able to snap pieces right in that slot there like so and take them all the way through there like that and then you should be able to get chests on top now it's a little finicky to get them up here i found a really easy way to be able to do it because you need to to reach up there is just place down a little pillar and then jump on top of it and that's going to give you the height that you need in order to land the chest on top as you see there and then we're just going to carefully place them in there this one is a little bit tricky but if you're careful you shouldn't have any problems getting it to do it because basically you see there's that yellow square that yellow square is what you're looking at and that's the face that it's placing on so you want to make sure that you're looking at the one by one planks so that you're placing the chest on them and then if you need to move you just do the same thing or you can also just place the chest down and stand on it all you really need is that little bit of height so that you can look down on the planks all right and there we go our storage is complete we can delete that stuff and get our wood back now at this point you can add the signs all you should have to do is just i think just burn charcoal yeah if you just burn some food you'll get charcoal and that should give you the recipe for the signs and then we can connect one sign up here at the top and then you need to run a beam through the center here so we grab this beam here and we snap it right like so and then just run it across here that gives us our place to put our signs on for those chests and then we can put a sign here and put a sign down here on the floor and that allows us to easily access any of the chests that we need to access and they're all labeled all right so before we talk about putting in our metal working stuff so our smeltery and our charcoal kiln let's talk about getting our pit and some little things that you can do here for the pit so this is just something i like to do because you always end up with so much freaking sap and gray dwarf eyes that it's kind of ridiculous so all we did is take these pieces here the 45 degree and the half wall and you just place it like this now if for some reason you are walking by here, and I designed this specifically so you won't be walking by this very often, but if for some reason you want to, you can actually take this out and dig a hole straight down a little bit deeper and they will fall down in the hole. But the downside to that is then you can't get them if you need them. So for whatever reason you may need them, accessing them is going to be a bit of a pain in the butt. So I just have this set up like this because you're really never going to be back here far enough cl or close enough to them that you're going to be picking them up on a regular basis. Okay, so let's put in our metal crafting stuff. 
So to do this, we just need to clear a little bit of space here and we want to clear space towards the middle. So for the forge, we need to clear four. So we just clear four of them out like that. The smelter, sorry, I'll get the name right eventually. And then we can put down our smelter like so. Now you want those floorboards back. You can easily get them back. Just look at the, something else that's not the smelter and you can snap them back into place really easily underneath of it. And there we go. So now we have our smelter inside. So for the charcoal kiln, it's the same thing. We just need a bigger area. So for that one, we're actually going to get rid of six of these. And then we're going to go to crafting. We're going to grab our charcoal kiln and we're going to spin it. And we're going to try to line it up just like so because you can't really put one here in the front uh, depending on how deep this ends up setting or what have you uh, you got to make sure that you can get the charcoal out so i just leave one away from the front so now we're going to go back to our build pieces and we can do the same thing luckily we have these beams here and it snaps really easy to the face of the beams and we can get behind it and get on the other side there we go, get behind it, snap it to the beam. That one doesn't look like it snapped properly, so I'm gonna delete it and try again. And then I'm just gonna leave the one here in the very front or front center out of there so that the charcoal can fall out easy. Okay, so now you have that. The next thing you're gonna do is stand in your fire and build a forge. So the forge comes out two from this section here. So you go one, two, and then the forge is gonna be right here. That should be the right spot for it. That should give us plenty of room to put in all of the other things. And at this point, you should also be getting fine wood now. So now we're going to put in our tables as well. So what we're going to do is just place a table back here, something like that. And then we're going to slap down a chair on it as well, just like that. And then we're going to do the same thing up here at the front. And this ensures that we get the resting nine buff everywhere. So we're going to do that. We're just going to slap a chair down right up next to it like so. And then we're also going to do a banner. You can easily get the charcoal banner or the black banner once you get fine wood. So fine wood, charcoal, leather, scraps. And we're going to hang one of those here at the door. And then we're going to hang one towards the back. And then we're going to hang one in the center over our bed. And now you can see we are at comfort level eight. Now to get to comfort level nine, all we have to do is grab a deer hide rug. So you can do these at any point in the game. And we're just going to put one of these at each of the fire like so and doing all of that those last few things ensures that no matter where we are in here we have comfort level nine so now let's make use of this table and we can do that very simply by just putting a couple of chests on it like that i'm actually going to delete the chest and kind of center it a little more here in the center so something like that and then we can come over here to building and we can snap some pieces across the top like that, and we can get more chests in there if we just look at the top. If you have problems uh, getting it to snap to the right spot, just stand on a chest like we did for the front. Okay, so now we're going to work on upgrading the forge. So the cooler is super simple and the anvil is super simple. So for the anvil, we have room for it right like that. And then we grab our build pieces here. And if we put one up there like that and we come back over here to crafting and we grab the cooler, you can see it just snapped up there, but let's see if we can get it. There we go. So uh, I don't like that. I'm going to actually move it. Once again, if you're having problems seeing what you're trying to snap it to, we can just place a chest or anything that we can stand on so that we can get just a little bit higher and then we can actually see the platform to snap it on. So there we go. Now they're all nice and tidy. And then uh, you want to upgrade from there on. You can upgrade your to add your bellows. And if for some reason you can't get this to snap back here somewhere because of room or what have you, you can also snap it up here. If you tilt it like, or if you rotate it and do that, you can snap it up top if you're confined for space. And then from there, we can add in our fermenter 
should fit right in here. There we go. So there is our fermenter. And if you have all this back just a little bit, you can also end up fitting your fermenter here. Okay, so now let's upgrade our workbench. Workbench is super easy to upgrade. So we start off by putting the chopping block right next to it. Then we grab our tanning rack and we just slap that against the wall and as close to it as we can get it. So something like that. And then we have the ads. So the ads is going to go right over top. So we just snap like that. It needs two. And then we can grab the ads. You can stand on the workbench. And there we go. So the ads is now in place. And then you should also have room for the tool shelf as well. For the forge rack, you should have room for the forge rack as well in here. So if we do that, there we go. So we have the forge rack and uh, now we have level six. And then over here, we have level five. Let's talk about customization and further upgrading here. So of course, we're gonna put our cooking pot here. I forgot that, so there we go, cooking pot. But we can also go into furniture here and you can even get a dragon bed here. So if we do that, there we go. Now we've upgraded to the dragon bed and now we have comfort level 10. And if we want to take that a step further to work on maxing out our comfort level for what we can get here in a wood construction, we can hang the brazers. So we want to hang those right here so they have nice ventilation because they do put out smoke. So we're going to hang one there and we hang one here and then that should get us comfort. Yep. Comfort 11. And then the next thing would be the rugs. So you essentially want to do the same thing with the rugs. You want to kind of keep them close together. So what I recommend doing is alternating. So you would do a wolf rug there and then come over here and do a wolf rug over here and then come over here on the other side and do your Lux rug and then, or Lux, whatever they're called, and then the same thing over here. So let's talk about further customization and defense. So in my other build, I had two windows here. You can knock these pieces out and then easily throw in some framing which is all I did there in that other build. So we go like that. We put some across the top as well. And then we grab the little one meter and we can snap it right there on the inside like that. And then we have those beams going there and that gives us that. Now, if you want defense, defense is super simple and it's already set up for it and you can easily map it out. So we just go through here with our spikes. And if you're careful, you can snap them right in like that all the way down the side and you can see they're very they're very pointy and very pokey and you can just take that all the way down the side on each side and then on the back side as well we can just take them it well if it if the terrain decides to cooperate you can actually there we go take them like that and just use those as defense and you can cover everything but the door. Now there's another very important part that I haven't spoke about yet and that is using the ward as an alarm and you can put that anywhere in your building you want. I highly recommend putting it somewhere near the center though because you want it to cover as much of your building as possible so we can stick it somewhere like right here like that. That's a good spot. Now the reason you do that and then actually activate it. Let's activate it. You can see it goes out. Now, anytime any part of your building gets hit, you may not see it, but if it gets hit, you can hear it. It gives that massive flash. You can see it's a big area that it covers, but it gives that massive flash and makes that sound anytime your building gets hit. And it is absolutely fantastic as an alarm. We've been using it on the server and I, I won't never... I won't ever not use it again because you can be inside doing whatever and be being attacked outside and not realize it. But with this thing on and active, even if you're playing in single player, it works as an absolutely fantastic alarm that is hard to miss to, and you know that you're being attacked and you can go see what's up. So anyway, if you want to continue your defenses, the alarm is a good one. And then of course you can put your spikes all around your build 
and that's going to provide really good defense for you. Uh, provided you're not getting attacked by trolls, um, that's going to be the only one that might be a problem. Everything else is going to be super simple because the trolls, they're so big, they're going to attack from a distance and they're not going to hit the spikes. Everything else, if it tries to get hit your base and it's not ranged, is going to die on the spikes. And if it is ranged, you're going to hear it from the alarm and you're going to be able to go out and attack it. Yes, I know there's way better defenses. You can set this up on all kinds of different things. You can dig a trench around it, all of that. But obviously, you can go through and customize it however you want. If you want to trench around it at some point, trench around it at some point. It's your build to do whatever you want with. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this build. You guys wanted a build video. Here's your build video. It's the most efficient longhouse I could come up with. So if you found it helpful, consider hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can be notified when I upload other Valheim videos. And I don't just cover Valheim, I cover all kinds of different games, so you never know when I'm going to be making guides for a game that you may be playing. All right, that is going to wrap it up for this episode. If you like what you saw, consider hitting that sub button. I want to give a big thank you to my patrons for making this episode possible. Y'all are absolutely amazing people. If you'd like to join my League Crew Patreon supporters, please check out the link in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and share your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.